Amid criticism of its delayed response to the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. Congress says that it has reached an agreement with the Trump administration on a $2 trillion stimulus deal. This in a bid to protect businesses as well as taxpayers. The Senate is expected to vote on this later this Wednesday. Let's now take a listen to the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell speaking earlier. It's good news for the doctors and nurses in emergency rooms around the country who are waiting for more masks and more funding. It's good news for families all across America. In effect, this is a wartime level of investment into our nation. For more on this story, I'd like to bring in our business editor, Kate Moody. Kate, thanks so much for being with us. What more can you tell us about this sort of what's being referred to as a bailout deal? Well, we don't know all the details yet because the text hasn't actually been published yet, uh, but we understand it's going to be a mix of cash grants and loans, uh, a significant amount of money going into the healthcare system to improve and buy more medical equipment to deal with the pandemic, uh, some money also going to state and local governments. Now, we understand there's going to be checks delivered uh, to certain American families who are in need, about $1,200 uh, per individual who's earning under a certain amount, uh, about $500 for children. There's going to be an expansion in unemployment benefits, uh, expanding them for a longer period of time, increasing the amount that people can receive, uh, and also extending those rights uh, to freelancers or members of the gig economy. That's people like Uber drivers and delivery drivers. Uh, there's going to be a $350 billion program uh, to extend loans to smaller businesses that are being affected by the lockdown measures, as well as a broader $500 billion chunk uh, that's going to go to major corporations, companies that are described as being key national industries. That's likely to be things uh, like airlines and hotels. That measure has come in for a bit of criticism uh, and to try and dampen that down, we understand that lawmakers are going to be barring airlines from any stock buybacks uh, or executive bonuses uh, with this money that they're going to be receiving. Uh, we also know that any business controlled by President Trump or his family or any high-ranking members of the Trump administration will not be eligible for any of that aid. Okay, why did it proved to be so challenging when it came to reaching an agreement on these particular measures. Yeah, well, we've seen Congress with two failed votes on these kinds of measures. Uh, broadly speaking, Democrats said that Republicans were favoring big business over helping uh, the health care system and affected American workers. Republicans accused Democrats of delaying, uh, trying to overhaul the system as a whole rather than acting swiftly to bring in emergency measures. Uh, it's worth noting that U.S. lawmakers had already funded uh, additional vaccine research uh, and also expanding paid leave. Uh, this division in Congress, though, is really really symptomatic of the broader confusion about the U.S. strategy when it comes to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we're seeing lockdowns on a state-by-state -state or even city-by-city -city basis uh, rather than on a national one. Uh, and President Trump has contributed to that confusion a little bit uh, by effectively switching his strategy. He said yesterday that he hoped to get the U.S. economy up and running again, open for business by Easter. That's in less than three weeks' time. Uh, critics saying that the U.S. economy has yet to come to a full halt. Uh, so there's a lot of questions about where, how, how this strategy is being implemented. What we do know that is that if this stimulus bill uh, goes through, it will certainly be welcome news for affected businesses and American families. Kate Moody there with a business update. Thank you for being with us.